Welcome back to the FFP. Today, I'm going to be breaking down for you guys what an elite fantasy quarterback looks like statistically and whether or not you should be trying to target one in your draft. I think this is a great time to do this video because our next video coming shortly is going to be me and Rob breaking down guess what? Our 1.0 quarterback rankings. Now, we're going to do this first video coming up soon, and we're going to do rankings for all the positions. Then we're going to be updating those rankings every week on our website, making adjustments and improving. And then boom, when we're in the heart of the fantasy draft season, we will do a rankings 2.0 video where we again discuss more in depth these guys and why we ranked them where we ranked them. But for this first series, I thought it would be fun to get into some stats before we get to each position and just do a little bit of a breakdown. So here's my thought. I'm thinking for the quarterbacks, we do this. What is an elite fantasy quarterback video? For the running backs, we we talk about what makes a sleeper and how you can find them at the running back position. And then for the receivers, I was thinking, how do you avoid busts? How do you avoid those guys who have major concerns? So that's what we're going to be doing today. That's what I'm going to be breaking down for you. If you guys like this video schedule and you are excited about the videos we have coming up, leave a comment down below and let us know so we're motivated to get these videos and these podcasts out to you guys. However, if you're not, let us know what you really want to see because if people don't want to watch these videos and listen to these podcasts, there's not a whole lot of point for us posting them. So we do really want to hear from you guys and what you guys prefer. But I'll quit wasting time and let's get right into it and start answering some questions about elite fantasy quarterbacks and what they look like. First and foremost, the most important thing to note is that what makes a quarterback elite in a fantasy perspective has drastically changed over the last 15, 10, and even five years. Take a look back at last season. There were 10 quarterbacks to throw at least 31 passing touchdowns. That's a lot. I mean, that's insane. You practically weren't a fantasy starter or a top 12 quarterback unless you hit that 31 passing touchdowns mark. And that doesn't include the fact that these guys are doing even more in the ground game and being even more effective every single year. Heck, look at it. There were three guys with at least 40 passing touchdowns and six guys with at least 35 By the way, take a look at uh, number six, Kurt Cousins had 35. That was a guy who everyone labeled a disappointment last year and and weren't huge on and thought he underperformed, and he still hit the 35 mark, and I think that just tells you what the league is like these days. Go back to 2011. That's a year where Julio Jones and A.J. Green come out and have 1,000-yard receiving rookie seasons, are starting to show the NFL that, hey, wide receivers can produce from, you know, their very first year and the league is really changing into more of a passing league at that point and yet there was only five quarterbacks to throw at least 31 passing touchdowns that year but it gets even more interesting go back to 2005 and 2006 both of those years there was just one quarterback to throw at least 30 passing touchdowns so I do want to hear from you guys a little trivia question in 2005 and 2006, who were those two quarterbacks that were the only guys those seasons to throw at least 30 passing touchdowns? Because I think that's phenomenally interesting uh, to look at that and just evaluate how different the league was back then that you know even guys who were in the league were Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Drew Brees. There were some big names, and even they weren't doing it. Why? Because it wasn't even necessarily how good you were. It's what type of league you're in, what type of system you're in, what type of coaching staff and offense you have. And the NFL just didn't seem to support passing touchdowns and quarterbacks with huge volume as much as they do today. Again, that's obvious, but it is important to note because I think there are people who are, you know, maybe you're 45 and you've been playing fantasy for 20 years. It might not be obvious to you that, hey, throwing 30 touchdowns isn't as valuable as it used to be. I know that's like crazy to think about, but it is. You can have a 30 passing touchdown season and not finish as a top 12 quarterback. When you look at some of those guys who did last year throw in 30 touchdown marks, not all of them did because there's a lot more to it nowadays and there's a lot higher expectations. So uh, why don't we just read off? I literally took the top three fantasy quarterbacks from last season and averaged out all of their stats in all of the categories that are important see what the average elite fantasy quarterback looks like. The average 4,271 yards, five 300 plus yard passing games, 8.6 yards per attempt, 37 passing touchdowns to only nine interceptions. 
Uh, I do want to get into what they're able to do in the ground game now, guys, because that's also incredibly important. They're averaging 91 rushing attempts for 461 yards, five yards per carry, and averaging seven rushing touchdowns. Now, that being said, you don't need close to 500 yards and seven TDs on the ground to be an elite quarterback. Heck, Aaron Rodgers didn't do it. But we're seeing more and more guys who are doing it and using that in to their advantage. I mean, look back to the year that Pat Mahomes threw 50 touchdowns. He had two on the ground. And heck, he probably would have had more on the ground, but he didn't need to because his guys were just wide open. Um, so that is really incredibly important to look at. We'll come back to the rushing in a second. But they total average fantasy points. They had 400. They averaged 25 fantasy points per game and 0.65 fantasy points per drop back. So that's what a typical fantasy quarterback is looking like in that elite tier. Those are some pretty crazy numbers. Again, 37 passing touchdowns, which sounds huge, plus the seven average rushing. You're looking at 44 total touchdowns to be in that top three mark, and you might not even hit number one, you know? So that's really important to remember. Guys, I think the truth of it is you're going to have to hit over 40. That's it. That's the new standard these days. 30 was the standard before, but forget that. You know what the standard is now? It's 40. If you don't get above 40 touchdowns total at the quarterback position, you will not finish number one, and, and you're not going to be elite. So I just want to make this video mostly for that single stat and to remind everyone that you, you got to bump your expectations up. You got to sit here and not get you know too excited about some of these seasons. The fact of the matter is Justin Herbert had a phenomenal year for a rookie. He set the record for rookie passing touchdowns, 31. That was insane. It was phenomenal. It was fun to watch but it didn't equate to him having quite the same fantasy season. Yeah, he still did have a darn good fantasy year, but he didn't finish number one, didn't finish you know top three or anything like that. And if you're looking for an elite quarterback, it's funny to say that you might have been totally right on your prediction for Justin Herbert, and you still didn't make it. Now, uh, rookie quarterbacks are producing more than ever. They are much more reliable than ever, and we're actually going to talk about reliable fantasy quarterbacks in a second, but I do find all this very interesting. So... Moving on, I want to talk about something that matters that I don't think we think about often, and that is how many weeks out of the season can a quarterback finish in the top 12, right? How often are they a fantasy starter that week? Because I don't care how good you are, if you have huge games and then bad games, you still need to be benched on the bad games. I don't care if your name is Aaron Rodgers. If you go out there and get me zero points, I need to have found a way to predict and know and get you out of my lineup, right? I mean, that's just it in fantasy. It's week by week. You're playing money ball, and you're trying to win as many games as possible. So uh, taking a look at it, the top three fantasy quarterbacks from last season averaged 7.6 top five weekly finishes. That means they averaged seven times, seven weeks out of the year, they finished top five in fantasy scoring. Find that very interesting, right, where even if you're getting one of those top three guys, they're only producing in the top five a little less than 50% of the time. So that is definitely something to note that, you know, you're not going to get elite production out of them every week, which some people, I think, expect that. And if you're a mature fantasy owner, you kind of already know that, but it is important to note. However, the stat goes further than most people think. I was really shocked to see this. Josh Allen finished top five in or finished first, excuse me, in top five fantasy finishes per week, right? He had the most top five weekly finishes. He was phenomenal. When he was great, he was the best. But he finished ninth in top 12 finishes, which tells me that he was either elite or not very good because ninth in top 12 finishes ties him with Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr and a lot of very average quarterbacks. If that's crazy to you or doesn't feel crazy to you, then I think you're insane because you could get as many starting weeks from Kirk Cousins as you did from Josh Allen. Now, yeah, of course, the difference there being when Josh Allen did finish in the top 12, it was five total touchdowns and 400 yards. So he was still more valuable for sure. I'm not saying that he wasn't more valuable than those guys, but it is important to evaluate some of those stats and, and just look at that uh, because, man think that's pretty interesting. Um, as I consider that, what that tells me is that you're going to get weeks from your quarterback where he will win games for you. 
straight up. He is going to win a game for you by putting up that many points, and the rest of your team can have a goose egg. Except there could be multiple guys with weeks like that, multiple positions. You might need a few of those strung together. I mean, that's the truth. So uh, let's continue on with even more of these stats. And I know this is a stat-heavy video, so my apologies to anyone listening on our podcasts. We do appreciate your support. There is a lot of graphs that I'm showing right now in this video, so if you'd like, you can check out our YouTube and see some of them. I think the visuals might help. But if we look at our quarterback number one from last year, they scored 409 fantasy points. Move to the QB12, who scored 297 fantasy points. That is a 72% uh, retention rate, or if you flip it the other way, a 28% uh, fall off where you're getting 28% less fantasy points from a QB 12 than a QB one. I think that's very interesting to look at that stat because that is much smaller than other positions. In fact, if we go down to the running backs, if you go from RB one to the RB 20 or excuse me, RB one to the RB 12, it's just 55% fantasy point retention. So at the running back position to go from RB one to 12, you're cutting your fantasy points in half. To do it at quarterback, well, you're only taking 25% off. So I think that's quite a difference to note. There are deeper, more reliable options later in the draft at quarterback than there are at any position. And that's the philosophy that we have said time and time and time again. But The numbers support it. So I did want to mention those numbers and not just be telling you what to believe. But I think there's one more thing to talk about, one more thing to consider, um, at least one more thing anyway. There's probably a lot of small things, but one more big thing. And that comes down to the fact that do quarterbacks repeat from year to year? Because the answer is mostly no. I think there's a lot to that, but here's what we're looking at. Go back to 2019. Lamar Jackson finished first with 425 fantasy points. He followed that year up, <clears throat> finishing eighth with 347 fantasy points. So you go from first to eighth. In 2018, Pat Mahomes was first with 431 fantasy points and followed that year up finishing eighth with 294. He did play just 14 games, but we'll talk about the injury games and stuff like that later on. In 2017, Russell Wilson was first with 360 fantasy points. In 2018, he followed that year up ninth with 308, and he played a full 16 games. Uh, go back to 2016, Rodgers was first with 391. In 2017, his follow-up year, he finished 30th with 137, though it should be noted that he played, I think, seven or eight games that year. It was was really can't be counted, that stat, so we will ignore Aaron Rodgers. But then you go back to 2015, Cam Newton led the league or led all quarterbacks in fantasy points with 407. He followed that year up in 2016 by finishing 16th with 268 fantasy points. So... Huge drop-off there, major drop-off um, in quarterbacks where guys are going from first to eighth, first to eighth, then we see first to ninth, and first to 16th. The fact of the matter is there's still some value there the next year, but there's not really a whole lot of retention. It seems like every year there is a new quarterback to light up the league. Think about it. Uh, his first year, Lamar Jackson had six passing touchdowns. It was horrible. The next year, he was the guy. He was insane. He was lights out. And I don't think any other, you know, anyone in the NFL wanted a quarterback other than Lamar that year, right? I mean, that's just it. Uh, Carson Wentz, right? He had a pretty mundane rookie year, but he followed that up his next year. Lights out. Before getting hurt with that ACL injury, he was on pace to win MVP. Um, I'm not going to go over every year, but it happens every year. Guys like Matt Ryan, guys like Cam Newton, they have big seasons and they don't repeat. So we've got this weird problem with quarterbacks where they score more fantasy points than any other position in the NFL. And that makes it incredibly tempting to draft your quarterback early. But we find that they don't produce year after year. They don't produce week after week. And there's a lot of great options underneath them. You can move from the number one spot to the number 12 spot and see you know, half as much loss in fantasy points as you would at the running back position because there's just more depth at quarterback. And you only got to start one and you only got to find one and matchup plays a big indicator as again, quarterbacks struggle to can kind of repeat from week to week. Again, let's go back to that Josh Allen thing. He's just one example and not every quarterback is as volatile as he was, but he was first in top five finishes weekly, ninth in top 12 finishes weekly. 
So often you're seeing that with some of these elite fantasy quarterbacks who are finishing up there is that, hey, they're having huge games. They're also having not so great games. All right, so in like a 15-minute span, guys, that was a lot of stats. And I think it was, again, if you're listening on podcast, my apologies, just threw a lot of numbers at you, and it's probably hard to absorb all of that. But the point of this video was, again, we're going to be doing our rankings soon, and I wanted to go position by position and do just an interesting overall look at that position before we dig into the players individually. Um, And hopefully this helps you understand quarterbacks a little bit better because I've said it and we've said it, me and Rob especially have said it every single year, and that is, you know, don't draft your quarterback too early, right? These guys are volatile, they're inconsistent, and there's also always another option out there. Um, So hopefully by actually digging into these numbers, you were able to learn a few things. One, your standard for what makes an elite quarterback needs to be higher. Let's be honest, quarterbacks need to get pretty darn close to 50 TDs on the year before they're going to finish number one at all. Um, Two, uh, you got to be more effective on the ground, even, you know, because the fact of the matter is, you know, if you're not going to rush for six touchdowns, then you need to be passing for 50. And I think it's a little bit easier to rush for 40 or excuse me, to throw for 40 and rush for eight, right? You know, so hopefully that helped you guys a little bit out just understanding what exactly you need to be doing at the quarterback position and how to evaluate these guys. This video, again, heavy with stats, pretty short. I'm going to cut it short because I don't think a video this stat heavy could carry for 45 minutes like we sometimes do when we're just having fun chatting about our favorite players. Um, But again, I do hope this helped you guys. If you liked this breakdown of just in-depth what does an elite fantasy quarterback look like, let us know in the comments. And again, I want to hear your guesses as to the 2006 and 2005 seasons, which quarterbacks led in passing touchdowns, because I was shocked to see that stat. But um, even thinking about it, it sort of makes sense looking back. But Anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Again, I know this was really heavy and dense, so we're just going to cut it off now, and let's continue this discussion in the comment section down below. You guys have a great day, and God bless.